Today on What Went Wrong, the <laughs> you talk about after the premiere. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brett Mauser, and uh, we're going to continue on today with Jeff Price hey. and Carlos Leos. Yes, sir. Uh, continuing, since we're talking about premiere, we're splitting premieres today. We're talking, we're going to split this up into a couple episodes, and today we're going to talk about, uh, from a filmmaker standpoint, uh, usually after the after party, mm -hmm. and you've got three or four people left, usually this is one of the stars or two of the stars, the producer or director, you've just got a couple people sitting the hardcore around. group. Hardcore group at three in the morning, you're outside on the patio, and you're talking about the premiere. Yeah. And you're talking about the movie. Right? Yeah. And, you know, you usually start with the premiere. Oh, did you see how drunk that guy got? Oh, my God, that was great. I didn't know it and then it'll usually then you, then you start bringing oh and let me tell you about the movie this you, this one shot or yeah. this happened yeah. or that one and that's a very important part of the movie making process right because you're doing what we do here on this episode you're talking about what went wrong what went right and that's pretty much what we've done that in every pretty much yeah. every, every every film show. and and usually i mean the, the best time to do it is right after the premiere Right. Because it's, it's all fresh, fresh in your, your mind, mind, and you can remember audience reactions. You can remember what hit, what didn't hit. Um, and sometimes you'll decide, you know, maybe it was something that was missing, or where, you know, do you want to do a prequel, or do you want to do a sequel? And you come up with those ideas. Yeah. Last night, after uh, everybody had left, it was pretty much the three of us. We were sitting on the patio yeah. talking about Lady Lawler. There was. Talking about uh, uh, actors. Uh, their performances, their behavior on set, mm -hmm. um, but also where we go with the characters. Right. What was the what? What did I like about the character? Yeah. What drew? You know, what, what? do I want to know more about this character? Mm -hmm. uh, we were one thing that I didn't get to discuss, you know, with you, you guys at the time. And we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to give an example of that of, of how we break down a movie or start talking about a movie. We were talking about your character and uh, Andrews. Yeah. And really, there was the. I really liked where we were going with that about talking about what made him the way he was. Yeah. Uh, I didn't say anything at the time, but in the back of my head, I was thinking, does that take away though from hmm. the character that we saw him in in Lady Lawman? Mm -hmm. Because you, Denise and I had talked about that. This, is one of the things I was going to bring up. Yeah. Is that you had the the, the great villains of the Disney films. They were just evil. Yeah. And now they're going back like the Maleficent, Maleficent and giving justification as to why they're evil. Mm. And now it just ruins it because, you know, it's one of the, the, the justified their right. actions as well, the great not Disney, right or wrong. Yeah. The great Disney movies were based on fairy tales, you know, and fairy tales were told as life lessons. Um, which is why they were so dark and scary because mm. the the world is a dark, scary place. No one wants to think about that. Yeah. People don't want to talk about it. People yeah. don't want to think. But seriously, out in the real world, it is a dark, scary, evil place, and it will beat you down. It will kill you if it can, and and not care at all. The law of the jungle, as they say, the yeah. survival of the fittest, and the them that, business. <laughs> and them that aren't them that aren't suited don't survive. And so the whole idea of the fairy tales was to make sure that your children learn these lessons about goodness, about truth, honesty, doing the right thing, fighting for what was right um, at, at all costs. And the fact that your heroes may not turn out, it, it may not be a pretty ending for them but by doing the right thing, but the right thing is still supposed to be done. And part of that was the concept that evil exists. Um, and it doesn't matter that they had a bad childhood or this happened or or they came from a bad part of town evil exists yeah andrews the stuff he was doing was evil it doesn't matter that he had a bad upbringing it didn't matter that his that his mommy didn't love him enough or his daddy loved him too much it doesn't matter okay the shit he did was straight fucking evil yeah okay i mean what he did to his slaves straight freaking there's no other way to explain what he did because when Ambassador Yanks came in and told me I had to get rid of them slaves, I locked all my slaves in the barn. And then I set the barn on fire. So if you wanted my slave, you would burn that night. There's no justification for that other than evil, all right? 
and the whole point of having evil in the world. And you touched on it, not just with Andrews. You also talked about men strapping explosives to themselves. Mm -hmm. How do you fight that? You can't negotiate with that. The, just the willingness to yeah. be able to do that for someone. The willing to do that for yeah. someone. Exactly. And you touched on that. Maybe that lesson was lost on some people. It wasn't lost on me because yeah. I've dealt with that before. Yeah. And you can't negotiate. There's no talking at that point. It's the, the conversation's done. Yeah. And that's the same thing I said. Like I said, if, if, if they've called me, we're no longer speaking. <laughs> if, I've showed up in, if I've showed up in the area, we're pretty much done talking at this point. <laughs> says, it's time for you to pay the piper, and it's not going to be pretty. You're not going to make it, you know. Um, but that the lesson is, and because of that, and the reason that happens is because there are people. There are things. There is a, an entire concept that there are things that exist because they are evil mm -hmm. okay and you have to teach that lesson and that's one of the things denise has always hit on it's one of those she just i've listened to her rail against maleficent because of it taking evil and then giving it a a, a justification there's no justification for evil andrews may have been a person that had bad things happen to him. I'm very certain something horrible happened to Andrews. I am absolutely positive that somewhere along the world, somewhere along his way, something happened that broke him at some point. Or maybe not. You know, maybe maybe he's just always maybe he was evil. born that way. You know, maybe maybe it's not a justification. Maybe it's not giving him a justification. Maybe it's just more kind of like telling more about. Man, this dude is just a he's just, just a, a sociopath. Look at this guy. You know, like they like they did with uh, with Hannibal Lecter. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they like they never. I guess they kind of did try to go back and do some kind of a justification. With yeah, that, still, but, he's still just to use. But, but yeah, but you, but you still kind of always got that that they, there was just kind of no turning back. This dude was burning ants with microscopes. Right, we're talking about ants earlier today. Yeah, and so kids, <laughs> but, yeah, kids need to learn. Yeah, P people need to learn. People need to understand. Andrews is one of those characters. A, a friend, one of the things you did, and I've talked about this yesterday, was you took a character who is inherently. Uh, unjustifiably and irrevocably evil, but you didn't make him a caricature, caricature of that. You weren't snidely whiplash, you know, twisting your mustache. You were evil and twisted and horrible, but the character wasn't some cartoon of evil. It was an actual human being who you realized very quickly that was a black spot on humanity. Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. I didn't want to say brown spot on humanity because that sounds like he shit himself. We're going to talk about why I laughed in a whole nother episode. <laughs> anyway. Because no one likes you. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But it's one of those things where you just kind of have this whole idea that, that Andrews is bad. But the thing was, and this is part of the, 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 the post-premiere armchair quarterbacking that we did is that Carlos took a character that was inherently evil just through and through for whatever reason but wasn't over the top does that make any sense mm -hmm. I mean he was yeah. I mean he was he was like I mean you were like holy shit, what's the, oh my god you know but it wasn't like oh, really you see what I'm saying there's a difference you get to that line and if you if you you know, if you go this way, you're Colonel Bison. You know, yeah. you're at a, you know. But but it was also it was also not that case of of yes, we don't justify his actions or why he was doing that, but we still give him motivation mm -hmm. and we understand the character. Yeah. Just because you understand the character doesn't defend him. And or, that's and that's know. part of what that's part of what makes this character not a caricature. We we understand him he's not as just, a human being. Yeah, he's not just yeah. evil for being evil for evil's sake. And we need a bad guy. Let's put him in here. Yeah. Let, let's make him evil. Right. Well, and it's not why is he evil. It's what why does he not think he is evil? Yeah. And that's which is that's the, what all evil is going to which be. Which is the most frightening thing because most you can't doesn't think that because you evil. can't negotiate with that because he's like well, what if change this is yeah. a, this is the way the world should be yeah which is which is kind of which is kind of where i got from that and it's kind of weird saying what i got from my performance but kind of what i got from my performance was where i went with that was it i kind of wanted to know a little bit more about him you know just just based on you know kind of what you're saying you know right. you, you you have this guy there's a reason yeah. like there's something going on with this dude and and it's it's you know it, it like i was kind of fascinated with me again that's kind of weird to say man but you know no, no, i was kind of yeah. 
I was kind of fascinated with with you know with who that character actually was. I was interested yeah. in you know why it was that he felt so disassociated you know from from reality you know and and it and and but but not in an over he he wasn't he wasn't disassociated in an over the top way you yeah. know it and 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 I I think because of that that's kind of what went that other direction instead of trying to just say ah you know f that guy dude he's just evil you know it was just kind of like man yeah f that guy he's evil but why dude you know what well, I mean because he's funny it you know? actually makes him more frightening yeah because it's one well, thing it's, it's the Thanos right you know you you could you know, the difference between the first one Infinity War whatever and then Endgame. Endgame, he was just the evil dude. I'm just going to kill everybody now. But in the first Infinity War, he was like, I'm doing this to save the, the universe because there's not enough resources. We've got to get half the people out. That way everybody can, you know, of course, anyone who's ever, you know, actually read an economics book. Yeah, just so like that not, that you cannot <laughs> have. There's a chain of you can't do yeah, this. You, 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 you kill you take away 50 percent of the people. You've destroyed <laughs> humanity. <laughs> <laughs> don't you understand logistics you idiot <laughs> especially if it's just random what if all this what if you just you, you accidentally or you, the 50 percent are all the farmers yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got, nobody knows how to plan a all right. or so the, now the truck that drivers the, the, truck the guys who build the roads the guys who drive the boats on the airplanes yeah. now what the fuck are we doing the only 50 so. the only 50 percent that are left are lawyers and politicians <laughs> oh damn and then everybody else gonna kill themselves because that's who's left <laughs> Who's, how are they going to eat? Shout out to the politicians and the lawyers that are my friends. I'm sorry about that. I'm not, you assholes. But that was the difference between the th the, the two Thanoses in yeah. my book. Was you you didn't you didn't like him. You knew he was evil, but you understood why he was doing what he was doing, which made it more frightening. And then in the second one, he was just evil. I'm just going to kill everybody. Yeah. It's like well, that doesn't make any, any sense. For, sense. You know, especially you know for you know hundreds of years, this was your plan. Now somebody pissed you off, and you're going to go. My plan. It's just going to be. <laughs> well, that's the same problem. Once again, talking about Game of Thrones, as we as we've talked about in the past, you had characters who I was interested. Now I've only seen one episode of Game of Thrones, okay, but I kept up with it. I know what's going on. Um, but you had these characters who were driven by certain things, and certain people wanted certain things, like everybody on the planet, okay. And then season six or season whatever the hell eight rolls around, and you've got characters who are just like, I'm now just, just crazy, yeah, and, and man. you're like. The hell? That's when the dude with the destroyed the wedding came in, wasn't it? With the, the dude with just, the, there was all sister. There was all kinds of just crazy <laughs> going sideways. And then characters who had been interesting just became like, oh. Uh, yeah. And other characters who you could see where they were going and why they were the way they were. And you understood and you actually you were actually rooting for them. All of a sudden became just complete f***ing whack jobs. Yeah. And you're like, the f*** is going on? And, and at that point, I mean, like, I couldn't even keep track of it. Now, I mean, I was one. I always used to watch YouTube's. I see that I would see this talk about the discussions. I would listen to the character because I love characters. Mm -hmm. I love character driven yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't have the patience for television. I don't have the patience for movies. I just. I don't have that. In my brain. I can't. But I understand and I read and I always think. And I'm watching these characters just make complete. Like, all the characters made a left turn. Every goddamn one of them just went and nothing made sense anymore. Which is why. Everything at Game of Thrones was, was this, and it was the world, and it was that. And all of a sudden, overnight, people went, and you can't even find it now. Yeah. And that was two years ago that happened. Now, how do you take a, 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 a show that became a phenomenon and overnight completely remove it from the zeitgeist of the world? How do you do that? You destroy the writing. You destroy the writing. You take these characters and you make them caricatures that no one cares about anymore. Dude, I stopped watching that show very specifically for exactly what you're talking about right yeah. there. And I, I don't remember the character's name. I hunt for all of y'all that love Game of Thrones. I'm sorry. I don't remember the character's name. But there there was, at, you know, at, at one point, first of all, let me back all the way up and remember when I, I skipped over. It took me a little while to even want to start watching it, even though I like that kind of stuff. It just took me a while to want to get into it. Yeah. I finally got into it, and I was like, okay, cool, man. Eddard, man. Eddard Stark. That's my boy. Shout out to Eddard Stark. Shout out to Eddard Stark. That was my boy. And, I, and in, like, in like five minutes into the episode, they're cutting the dude's head off, man. I was like, all right, I'm done. So I stopped watching it for about a year, right? Yeah. And, you know, everybody has their opinions on all that kind of stuff or whatever. So, But then I come back to it, and I think it was the, in, that episode, in that season that you talked about, yeah. seven or eight or somewhere around there where... This for me, it felt like the dude just showed up out of nowhere. The one that the one that married the sister, uh -huh. the the oldest sister. Yeah. What, what was what was that dude's name? The, uh, uh, his dad was like some kind of a. 
I don't know. I can't remember the name. This is probably going to get edited anyway because I can't remember the damn name. But anyway, um, and, and like he came in and he was like, he like, you know, destroyed the, the chick and every, all the, all the, everybody got killed, the Red Wedding. Yeah. Um, you know, when that happened, when everybody well, got see, killed in the wedding. I don't mind stuff like that happening because you had a certain group of characters who wanted a certain thing and this group of characters was in their way. And that's been happening the world over. The Romanovs and the, uh, the Caucasians and all these different things and uh, the Italian uh, uh, royalty. Oh my Lord, the Spanish monarchy. Blah, all the crazy crap they were doing. And even in the English, in our, in our, I guess our history, the English monarchy with, with, uh, with Princess Mary and Princess Elizabeth and all these different, all these things that happened. That makes sense to me. What doesn't make sense is for to have characters who are going a direction that we can look at in history. King Ferdinand did a certain thing. King Henry did a certain thing. King Richard did a certain thing. And then all of a sudden to have these characters stop being who they are, make a left turn and turn into somebody else overnight, that doesn't happen in the world unless they have a psychotic break. And you can have a monarch have a psychotic break. It is perfect, perfectly possible, talking about King Henry, to have a, a monarch have a psychotic break, turn left, and just go f***ing whack. It's perfectly possible. It is perfectly possible. Perfectly possible. It is perfectly equitable and possible. <laughs> but you can have that happen. But to have the entire cast <laughs> of actors who are still... Stellar. There wasn't an actor in that show that wasn't awesome. I mean, seriously. Even the little dumb characters who you do see like once or twice in, in a season were like, that dude's interesting because I believe he is who he says he is. I don't know, man. I didn't like the little punk ass, little punk king, man. The little bitty dude, man. Yeah, little... but that's the point. You weren't supposed to like him. He was an well, asshole. I guess you're right. Yeah, I guess He was a fantastic sense. character. He was a dick. But I liked his character. I liked watching him play a horrible king. I liked watching him be terrible. I like watching people act like certain things in certain shows. But at what point does that turn you off, though? Right? Like, and I, and I, 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 well, I, I, point, I get to so that. I, don't I get to that. that off, I get to that in a second. But don't so, forget that point. I'll get to that point. So the thing is, when everything just goes left, it's like, what the f are we doing? And, and and like I said, if you were a filmmaker, you have your characters going a certain direction, and if all of a sudden you change them because I guess you're just tired of the characters, you're going to lose your audience. Like that. Rules of the universe. Yeah. Getting back to the rules of the universe, which are the all-encompassing everything. If I could ever point your students to watch one goddamn episode, it's rules of the universe. Don't f*** mm -hmm. with the rules. They did, and they lost everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, talking me. yeah, talking about a character who gets to the point where they're so evil and twisted, yes, I just can't please, watch them anymore. please, please. Let's talk about that. That does happen, but that's a question of writing, because as a writer, you have to gauge what your audience can handle. Well, not even just necessarily so evil and twisted that you can't watch it. I think it comes down to motivation. Yeah. Okay. And and because you, know, you know if you watch somebody get more sick and twisted and that can really be beneficial because now you just see them being more and more of a challenge for the hero to overcome. Right. But when you get somebody and, and you can look at it between the difference of the, the first Thanos versus Steppenwolf in the Justice League. Haven't seen him. Okay. Basically, the the Steppenwolf character, he was just the bad guy. He was just there for them to be the to have a bad guy. But you didn't understand why he was doing what he was doing. It why was sense, he doing no this? One cared. What, you know, there was no understanding. If you've got that guy, you know, if, if you see that character evolve and why he's getting more and more, you know, if he, if the guy's evil, sick, and twisted to begin with, and he's got a teammate, a, a woman that he works with all the time, and she helps him do the maniacal, shit, and then she, you know, backstabs him, so he starts getting more and sick and disastrous. Then you get, then you, then you start going. Because oh, you can see. You can see that hit Hitler in, when he was almost assassinated. He took a left turn and went worse. Yeah, you know. It's, so it's a historical. It's a historical. King Henry once again. Yeah. When the, this one tried to kill him. So it's that. It's it's that. It's almost that motivation. But when you can't explain why he went bat crazy. Right. Then <clears> it's just like what the what hell? The hell really? Watch? And and see and that's kind of and that's kind of more to my question because and, and I just want to use this guy King Joffrey I think is what his name was yeah. uh, to just just to be an example. Um, that's kind of that's kind of exactly to my point because you know at some point you need that kind of a you need that 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 that, that antagonist right like you have to have something going on building in that story while you've got other stories going on mm -hmm. right but but then at some point like I was legitimately tired of seeing this dude yeah right and and not not because he was such a good villain but at some point I was like I, this dude is pointless I think and to then that they point, ended up killing him off right right and, I think maybe to that point is that then it just becomes a gimmick. 
Yeah. That it's just his thing, it's what he does, and there wasn't any growth. See, that's maybe that's, that's what it was that he just flatlined. Well, so when so 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 that's so that's kind of my question. So so like when it, 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 you 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 like the character. You you like the way that that character was driven, his direction, his motivation. So then, and that's so the then importance it, of any character, whether it's the the protagonist, the antagonist. They have to grow and change. But so at, so, but at what point? Yeah. So, well, I, so I'll get to that. So we so when we watched when we first saw him, he was a young kid, and of course, um, Tyrion was trying to help him. He was trying to, and you, and you actually saw you actually saw Tyrion, like. Bitch slapping Joffrey yeah. up and down the street, yeah. you know, bitch slapping him around, yeah, yeah. and and of course, well, you can't do that. Oh, can't I? Wham, you know, and just you know, I'll do it again. <clears throat> and so you saw this 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 kid, this child who was being more and more childlike, and then of course you saw the rest of him, like his mother, <laughs> Cersei, and his even mother, his sister, or his aunt. Like <laughs> which one? <laughs> Sorry. All right, go ahead. So you saw his mother. You know, being like, oh, you know, it, but she was hungry for power like everybody else. And Tywin Lannister, who was the hand of the king, of course there was no king at the time, and of course she was Tyrion's father and Cersei's father, um, you saw his exacerbation with Joffrey being what it was. And then, but you, but you, you never saw them arrest what he was doing, which would have, which would, which did happen when you had, you know, um, uh, kings who were children who became older. Um, and some of them went the wrong direction, like um, uh, uh, in Bavaria, you had Ludwig, who became a king who was very young, okay? But he wasn't a whack job. I mean, he was, he was eccentric. He was definitely a little off, but he wasn't evil. He wasn't like, ah, ah, ah. you know, he's like, he's like, I want to build castles. I want to make the world a prettier place. It's like, okay, so maybe he's gay. That's fine. We can have a gay king. I'm okay with that. You know, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. But you didn't have him... Um, who like what King Henry VIII turned into, which was just a f-ing whack job toward the end of his reign when he was getting old and decrepit and sick and his mind started to go, but he was just, like, you know, doing things left and right. And so you have a point where in this character, who is Joffrey, you saw him being a little prat, just being a f-ing. And you saw uh, like Oleana Martell, who was his aunt, who was his aunt, yeah. who saw what he was turning into, and of course she took action. Which, if you haven't watched the episode, if you haven't watched the series, <laughs> don't care. Yeah, you care. don't have to worry about it now. <laughs> I don't care. She's the one that killed him, right? But no one knew what happened. Everyone blamed Tyrion. But the point was, this character, as you said, and as you said, started plateauing. He was just, he was just an he was just an asshole. And it was like people were like, yes, Joffrey's a dick. Yeah. And there comes a point when, and I think they 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 trod that line very well. There was a point when I was watching him. I'm like, "What is he? What's he gonna do now?" Yeah, yeah. But that's what would really happen in in the real world. Yeah. So what do you do? Like, if he would have been like out of nowhere, if he'd have done something uh, compassionate, yeah, that probably would have pulled you back in. You're like, "Well, what the? F-? Well, okay, he's probably did, got some evil plan behind." Yeah, yeah. But, it, it, but it, you it would have kept me getting, intrigued. It yeah. would have kept me intrigued would, with him. And then at so some he point, just plateaued. yeah, at some he became point, a I was caricature. Just done with him. And I, that's when you got to kill him or it makes something happen. See, for me, I felt like he was. I felt like it would have been cool if he was only there for Tyrion to slap around. Yeah. Like, and then they started going with this whole he's got to be king, and I was just like, all right. So I stopped watching it again. I stopped. Well, I, I broke up with Game of Thrones a few times. Yeah, man. That's you but, should. but but so but as a writer though, right? Like so so you know because obviously you know I write as well, and I don't write as well as you, but you know, but I write, and and when when I'm writing, like sometimes I try to protect my characters. And, and, and I try to do, I do my best to, to make sure that they don't get to that point. And, and maybe they do have their, they have their peaks and their valleys, you know, um, you know, depending on whether antagonists antagonist back up, you know, whatever. Um, but, but, but some of them, like I, I will legitimately try and coddle, you know, to make sure that people and don't you, get to that And that's the point. exact opposite of what you're supposed to do. Yeah, because yeah. Because in, 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 in every scene, when you sit down and you're going to write a scene, the first question you should ask is, okay, how do I f- with this guy? <laughs> Nice, and then you write. He's got to. You got to do something that f- with that dude's life. Yeah, in that scene, and then the next scene. What do you do? How do I f- with him now? Yeah, and that's what makes the interesting character, because now you're watching him just get you know, get get. You know, you're watching hurt. him deal with the fact that are you watching him deal with something that happens to him as it happens to all of us. But of course, being, being a movie, it's more extreme. Yeah. yeah. So 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 is it is it fair or safe to say that at some point you when you lose reality with the character, that's when you kind of get to a point where you're like, well, just kill the guy off yeah. already. Or you get to the point to where he's no longer interesting. 
Yeah. If Andrews had just been evil and just been, like I said, I keep bringing him to Snidely Whiplash. If he'd have just been twisting his, his mustache, and been, <laughs> yeah. you know, or just been just straight psycho all the time. Basically, at that point, you're just a raving lunatic who got let out of prison. Yeah. And that's all you are. And I don't care. Yeah, but that's not that's what the character was. That's interesting. Yeah, if you're just a if you're just a whack job that's wandering around, then I, then you're just yeah. a whack job wandering around. I've seen whack jobs. Wa- I live I, I live near Austin. I see whack jobs <laughs> walking around all the time. Okay, and look at look at look at every scene that you were in. Something was introduced to Andrews that made him even more interesting or more vicious because yeah. the first one. He can convince these guys to, to blow themselves up with dynamite. And what do you do as you're riding off? You're laughing. I'm laughing. So what, what happens? Okay, well, how do you top that? He just killed, his, he just killed a guy who he, was, he used to be a slave. You know, one of his After he burned. After he burned and killed his, you know, the daughter, burned all his... If well, you haven't seen the movie, please watch it now because we're giving <laughs> it away. And then what happened? And then you know, it's like, okay, well, he, you know, he was a, he was a slave owner. He locked all the slaves in a barn. He burned them down. Where do you go with that? Where do you go now? What's the next time we see you guys? Well, well, well even before, before, even before, before you then, get there, he kills, kills the whole, whole town. The whole town. <laughs> then you're, you're out of the picture for a little while. Then what happens when he come back to you? What's the next thing? We find out you killed the protagonist's husband yeah. and yeah. father and, and father. father. Yeah. And stole Every watch. Every time you you were like, how is it going to get worse? Yeah. Not to mention the fact that his gang has split up, and he's he's the over he's the Darth Vader over the he's, empire. He's like Geppetto, man. Like, and, 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 and again, and and I think I think that's what brought me last night to that conversation that we were having about like, like I, so there's something about this dude that I watched that I'm just like, man, I. But once again, a raving lunatic wouldn't have a gang of guys willing to fight for him. A raving lunatic wouldn't be able yeah, to convince people there's to... there's something to, to this guy. A raving lunatic yeah. wouldn't be able to organize and be and be alive as long as you are. A raving lunatic wouldn't have had 150 slaves. A yeah. raving lunatic wouldn't have been able to be this very intelligent, very capable, very charming sociopath. Yeah. And that's what makes him, A, interesting, B, terrifying. Yeah. You know, you know what I think? You know, one of the scenes that just came out when you brought that up right there, the, the charming and, and the sociopath that really, really brought to me when I was watching it that brought it together was the scene where, where they capture him. And and uh, and Miller comes in. And he's like, <laughs> he's, t- he's like, what? Well. Oh, hey, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's it's like it, it brought so much to that character. It was like it was like who he was. It was like it was the charm. It was the it, but it wasn't the character. It like, wasn't like you, like a raving lunatic wouldn't have done that. Yeah. He didn't yeah. smack his lips and look her up and down and say, hey, baby, come over and give me a lap dance. Yeah. Like, he was charming when he, he that if like, he were in another circumstance. You know, just meeting somebody at a bar and you did that, the girl would be like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and see, he was a gentle, not gentleman, but he behaved, like, what was his name? Matt Hasso's character. And he was like, yeah, yeah. 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 He was all dirty and scary, whatever else, when he was there with, uh, with, uh, Webb. Well, Miller, no, no, well, Webb. you. Yeah. Webb. Webb. His behavior, Andrews's behavior, was completely different than, uh, what, uh, uh, no, but Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yeah. Because Rodrigo was a skanky, scary, sweaty, dirty. Blah. He was the. He was kind of the. the let out of the, prison. Yeah, yeah. like the, yeah. the skulky yeah. that you let out of prison. He's yeah. like, ah, that wants a. You know, kind of, he's one of those guys. Yeah. Whereas Andrews was like, oh, a, a, a lady. I need to make myself presentable because that's what a gentleman does. Oh, let me straighten this out. Yeah. I'm, I'm very. And even Apollo was like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Yeah. That's not the actions of a madman, okay? And that, I, I've said it again, and I keep saying it, and I will keep saying it, when you have your evil characters, if you want them to be the Terminator, fine. It's a robot that's trying to kill you, okay? That has its place. Like Kyle Reese says, it will not stop. He does not feel pain. He does not feel mercy. He does not feel, you know... That itself, that's like a, that's a wall of water coming at you. That's the nature coming to destroy you. That's the, the, the grizzly bear coming at you. That's a completely different concept, okay? What you have here is a smart, intelligent, charming, thoughtful, uh, good scheming, yeah, relatively good looking, but he's a sociopathic psycho. How do you compete with that? He is everything. He Andrews is everything. That is like when you talked about how do you how do you you know talking guys into blowing themselves up. Well, there that's the whole you know uh, 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 religious religious extremism. Mm-hmm. 
which is an evil in the world. It's mm-hmm. always been evil in the world, but it's especially poignant nowadays. Mm-hmm. Well, his it's, gang was kind of like a cult. Yeah, it's, yeah, and that's definitely. the idea is that you've got the, you've got the people who really do anything in the world for them. That's any kind of cult. Yeah. That's any kind of <clears throat> progressive psychosis that you're going to have. Yeah. That's any kind of thing like that. And he's the the ringleader, but he himself is not victim to it. So he's Jim Jones. He's the yeah. Moonies. Yeah. He's all those different kind of characters that are terrifying in that particular yeah. way. That's why, like, if somebody he's, like he's the Covenant from from Halo. He's one of those guys that they have the religious extremism. Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna destroy the world. Yeah. yeah. That's why somebody like Ty's character Hal. Walks into you know a, a, a big group of gang members and says, "Hey guys, who wants to follow me and rob a bank?" Everyone's gonna like, "I ain't riding with Kermit." This because he's crazy. He's but, crazy. But, you can watch him and go, "That guy's nuts." I ain't following him anymore. Follow yeah. But you walk in, you know, fix your tie. You know, hey, you know, buy your beer. But the tell us buy your beer. We're gonna talk a little bit. Oh yeah, I have a beer. And so, and all of a sudden you, it's not. Hey, follow me. We're gonna destroy the world. It's. And why don't we come over here and then we'll do this and we'll do that and we'll go over here and that thing. Yeah. And then you slowly get pulled into this cult. Yeah, yeah. And then get convinced to blow yourself up with dynamite. And you recognize, the way you wrote that, it was, it was you recognize that without even having to say it. You never, you never saw this guy with all of his gang. Like, you know, that. so you, you kind of already know this guy is just pulling the strings of everyone and could care less about yeah. anyone except for Webb. Yeah. You know, that's kind of like all you saw. Maybe Rodrigo, maybe he likes Rodrigo. Yeah, his bit. gang members were just bullets. Yeah. Because he'd send them. Yeah. He, you know, they were, they were weapons to him. He so, just sent them off to... So again, you know, just kind of back to that question, and, and maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's the what went wrong episode that we're looking for. So, but, so at what point, for me, again, it's just weird because I played that character, and so to see myself play a character, that was the first, that was a challenging character for me. So to see myself... To see what I delivered as that character, it, it maybe that's why I'm wanting to see more. But at the same time, what I saw, you know, it, it was almost like, yeah, but now I got questions about this guy. Well, there's also know? a question like I had about Webb. Why is Webb hanging out with you? Yeah. What is your connection? Because Webb gave you up like that. Yeah. But you yeah. somehow you felt strong enough, or you were close enough to Webb to be in that cabin with him at the beginning of the movie. Um, he didn't get the dynamite. Yeah. Why didn't you get the dynamite to walk out there? What is special about you? Yeah, yeah, that's what. Why are you off with Rodrigo doing stuff? What the f- are you doing? Why are you in town by, by yourself? yourself? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. And so there's all kinds of questions I had about that um, because I I get Andrew's motivation. Yeah. Or he is. I don't get where Webb is in so much as I understand his, what kind of character he's playing. I, I get who he is. Yeah. But why yeah. <coughs> is he your favorite guy? Which is why it would be cool to see, for me, it is why it would be cool to see the two of them. Yeah. And to me, as the a... writer, and sometimes actors do this themselves, is they create that backstory. I mm-hmm. know, I, I you know, and in, in, in maybe it was in, in the original draft of the script, and I cut it, or whether it was just in my head. Webb was their foreman. Yeah. That to me, in my mind, he was the foreman, and you know he ran. You know he he, and he that makes sense. the slaves, and they, so they had that rapport. But it said, but the, but the character. The point is, the character was interesting enough, even as a side character, as a, as the second or third tier character that you want to see more. That I wanted yeah. to know you more. You want to see more, yeah. yeah. But that, but isn't that the sign, the mark of a good story and a yeah, good film? Sure. So you, you leave sure. them wanting more. And we could have answered all those questions, but, but then it, went, it was, it wasn't pertinent know, and did it hurt, you know, did not having those answers hurt the film? Not yeah. what happened? Why did they split up? There's that Prequel. kind of question. <laughs> There's that kind of question. And that, that actually came from timing. Yeah. And we had a scene where you, you know, it was scripted where we split off and then they were going to have a gunfight here and they had a gunfight here. And in the end, it was just like, we just don't have time for this. It's not necessary. It's not pushing the plot forward. It's going to answer questions, but it's not pushing the plot forward. And the questions but don't see, need to be answered. But mm-hmm. see, so again, just it, it still brings me back to that same question. And so at what point do you, you, you see a character on the screen. You're like, okay, yeah, that guy's dead, and I'm, I'm over it. I'm, I'm good with that. But so at what point is it that when you see this character on the screen, and that, and that, and that point's dead, that guy's dead, and you want more, at what point is it, does it become Joffrey? You I don't think I mean? there's Where, a... Yeah, I, I, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't think there's a, an actual linear map where it goes okay at this point this is when it happens yeah because i think it's going to be variable because that that may be what you want to do with the character you may have them going down this path and where you'd normally have that character do something more evil or something compassionate that changes it you keep it that way to reel people in a little bit more and get to that point like 
All right. All right. And now then you do, do something that. different. Yeah. Well, and, but think yeah. about in in the in the show Game of Thrones. If we're talking about it, how satisfying was it to watch Jeffrey choke to death? It, it, it wasn't satisfying enough. Oh no, but maybe, yeah. But maybe if you had done that earlier, it would have pissed people off because it was like because in the back of their head they wanted to see more of yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Because yeah. once so, they once they realize that's where the art of it comes in, at some as point to the science. Gotcha. Of it. At some yeah. point, he became irredeemable. Yeah. When you have someone like Andrews, who is this horrible sociopathic, psychopathic, terrifying, evil character. On a scale that is unsurmountable, uh, insurmountable in, in the movies you've done in the past, okay? And he's choking the main character to death after watching one guy die and dancing while he's trying to kill him, which is crazy. That came out, dude, that came out so good, man. Thank you. That was and, dope. And then taking her gun and killing the young innocent, k- killing, the, killing the little lamb. And then telling her she did it. Want you know you kill that boy, not me. You kill that boy about being someplace. You ain't no business, me. Yeah. And it says, <laughs> "Look what you did. You killed the little lamb." And choking her to death. And of course, then Buck pulls the thing and blah blah blah. She gets that one breath, and then um, Martinez comes in. And Martinez has had it. You're done. Yeah. Martinez is Martinez had already decided at that point. Okay, you you've had it. You're not surviving the rest of this night. Mm-hmm. When he's like, you're going to take me in. Martinez was like moments away from yep. boom himself. Um, and so Andrews has been shown this whole movie to be this sociopathic whack job. And everyone has learned to hate. Lo- love the character, but hate the character. And having Martinez shoot him would have been one thing. But to have the satisfaction of how he did die mm-hmm. was so much more because just like King Joffrey, just like uh, um, the phrase, you build these characters up into a certain thing. But it would have been one thing if like Aldo Frey had died like of a heart attack walking home. Okay, well, he's dead. But isn't it so much better to have the daughter of the people that he killed slaughter him and his entire family? Mm-hmm. Isn't that so much more satisfying? It would have been one thing to have Martinez go, blam and blow his and blow his brains out but isn't it so much more satisfying to have the other one of the other characters who had a personal connection who had this reason who had a hatred and so the audience gets a payoff to see him die so you have to you get the payoff of killing the character but then the remember is you get the payoff of having the right person yeah. kill that character right. because the audience has been going on this journey with you if you if you if you take them down the road and they're going to go to Disney World. And then you stop at like, you know, the big ball of twine. <laughs> no, I want to see. And so you give them that ending. But you may have turned toward the big ball of twine. And they think, that, oh, they're like, oh, okay, well, at least we get to go see the big, let's go see something. And all of a sudden, you make the left turning and, oh, we're going to Disney World. 